Good morning or good afternoon. Today we'll be recording a Quizette video on Quizette 821. Please make sure that you write your last name, comma, your first name, today's date, and your class color. Today I'll say that I'm green. Number one says, simplify by applying the distributive property. So the distributive property states that uh, when you have a number right outside of a parentheses, you can distribute that by way of multiplication. So you have to multiply the number that's outside to the both terms that are inside of the parentheses. Let's say you have three terms, then you would have three arrows. You would multiply it to the three different terms. All right, so three halves times two x plus three halves times six. All I did is grab the parentheses and put them around each term. And I know that when I have two integers or two numbers right next to each other, that means multi multiply. So I have three halves times two x. You would multiply straight across. So three times two x is six x. Two times the denominator of one is just two. Plus three times six is 18. Two times one is two. Now I can simplify those fractions because two goes into 18 nine times and two goes into six X, three X. So this complicated problem, when you simplify it, it's something very simple, three X plus nine. All right, number two says, <clears throat> simplify by distributive property. So that just means I'm gonna end up distributing a number by um, multiplying and combining like terms, then solve. And then it asks, how many solutions? We're gonna take note, notes on that today to define how do we know how many solutions it has. Have no fear, we're gonna figure out what that means. It's very simple. So first we're gonna distribute. Remember, we have DC MAM, so destroy or distribute. Uh, C means combine like terms, so combine. This is um, distribute or, or destroy. And then M means move the smaller variable. A means add or subtract. And then M means multiply or divide. Some of you guys might already have it memorized, but I still want you to write it nonetheless. All right, so the first step is destroy or distribute. I spelled distribute wrong, but I just added the S there. That's what happens when I talk and write at the same time. All right, I'm going to distribute this to to both of these. Now, when you're not working with fractions, you don't have to sit there and rewrite it like I did over here. You see, did you see how I like rewrote three halves times two x and then three halves times six? So, so that I don't get confused. When you have a fraction, you wanna do this so that you can like not mess up. But here, two times two x is just four x and two times x is just two x. So let me repeat that. So we have two times two x, that's four x. 2 times x, that's just 2x. Now there's nothing else to distribute. I'm going to bring down that plus 2, and that's going to equal 3x minus 7. Another thing that you might have noticed, I just realized this. I have 2x, and I have x. I can actually combine that, and that'll be 2x plus x, and that'll be 3x inside. Oops, sorry. That'll be 3x inside. 2 times 3x would be 6x which is ultimately what we end up getting here when we combine that. 6x plus 2 equals 3x minus 7. So again, what I said was I didn't combine like terms in here, but I could have because I could add 2x plus x, and that'll get me 3x. That'll only leave me with one term, so 2 times 3x will get me the 6x. Or I can distribute to both of them, and I'm going to end up getting 6x. So you can do it either way. But it's really rare that you can combine these two together. That's why I, I didn't even do it at the beginning because it's very rare that that's ever going to happen ever again. Anyways, so now I already did destroy or distribute. I combine like terms. Now I'm going to move the smaller variable. And just to, to make me feel good that I did my steps, I'm going to check that off. I'm going to check that off. Now I have moved the smallest variable. The smallest variable between 6x and 3x is 3x. So I'm going to... I'm going to subtract it because that's the only way I can move it to the other side is to do the inverse operation. When I do that, this zero pair cancels and I have negative 7 left. And then on the left-hand side, I have 6x minus 3x is 3x plus 2. So I already did DCM. Now I have to add or subtract. I cannot subtract or add this 7 over here. 
because it's the only thing left on that side of the equation. I can only get rid of this positive 2 here. And the inverse operation of positive 2 is minus 2. And what I do on one side, I do to the other. This is a 0 pair, so I'm left with 3x on the left. Now I have negative 7 and negative 2 added together. Okay, It's added together. Together, you have negative 9. Now the last step in DC MAM is to multiply or multiply or divide. I'm going to divide by 3 because it's being multiplied and the inverse operation is division. 3 goes into 3 one time. I'm not going to write 1x. I'm just going to write x because that's the same thing. 3 goes into negative 9, negative 3 times. So my answer is x is equal to negative 3. When you get a mystery number equals like a number, so like x equals negative 3, that means that it has one solution. So that's how I'm going to answer this. How many solutions? There can only be one solution, comma, x equals negative 3. All right, moving on to number three. It says simplify and solve, and then it asks how many solutions. So first we need to write down DC MAM. So write it, DC MAM. Please write it every time. Destroy or distribute. Combine like terms. Uh, move the smallest variable. Add or subtract. Last step is to multiply or divide. Please write it every time. All right, so right here I'm gonna destroy and distribute the fractions. It already has the fractions outside of it. Um, fortunately for us, it, it already has like a fraction on the right-hand side and it has a fraction on the left-hand side, so go ahead and solve it. So we have two to the two-fourths times four P, and you can even put a one under it because you already know you're gonna need it, minus two, fourths times 8 over 1. That's going to equal, and I'm going to write this in red, negative 1 half, and put the negative on the 1 so you don't forget it, 2p over 1, plus negative 1 half times 2 over 1. Okay, so now we have from the left-hand side, 2 times 4p is 8p. 4 times 1 is 4, minus 2 times 8 is 16, 4 times 1 is 4, equals, and I'm going to switch to red, negative 1 times 2p is negative 2p, over 2 times 1, which is 2, plus negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, now back to the blue side. 4 goes into 8p 2p times. 4 goes into 16 four times. So we just made it something easy. On the right-hand side, 2 goes into negative 2p, negative 1p times. And I'm going to keep the 1 there just so we remember that we have to get rid of it at, at one point. Plus, and then 2 goes into negative 2, negative 1 time. All right, so I destroyed and I distributed. Is there anything for me to combine on the right side? Or is there anything for me to combine on the left side? I'm looking on the right-hand side. There's no other p and there's no other constant. Remember, a number without a variable is considered a constant. There's no other constant or variable on this side that I can combine. There's no other variable or constant on this side. So I'm done with combine like terms. Now my next step is to move the smallest variable. So the smallest variable is negative 1p. So I'm going to do the inverse, plus 1p, plus 1p. I'm left with negative 1 on the left-hand side because this is a 0 pair. And then on this, I have 2p plus 1p, that's 3p, minus 4. I already moved the smallest variable. The next step is to add or subtract. I cannot take away or add this 1 because I would be leaving nothing on this side of the equation, and that's mathematically incorrect. The only thing I can move by adding or subtracting is this minus 4. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. This cancels, and I'm left with 3p 
equals negative 1 plus positive 4, that's going to end up being positive 3. Now, the last step in DCMM is to multiply or divide. 3 is being multiplied. Remember, that's multiplication right there. So the opposite is to divide by 3, divide by 3. I'm left with P is equal to positive 1. All that work just to figure out that P is equal to 1. Doesn't that make you feel good? Okay, so I'm going to write a sentence, and I'm going to say, since, since the letter is equal to just one number, like it's just one solution, I'm going to say, how many solutions are there? There are, or there can only be one solution, comma, P equals one. All right, last but not least, number four. And I'm going to challenge you guys to start it off. Start off three halves times 2x plus 6. Just do the left side right now, and let's see if you can do it on your own. All right, so I'm going to distribute three halves to 2x and three halves to 6. So if you didn't write the arrows, make sure you write them now. So we have three halves times 2x over 1 plus 3 halves times 6 over 1. And the reason I'm putting 1 is because I can put a 1 under every number, and it wouldn't change the value. It'll just make it easier when it comes to multiplying the fractions out. And then on the right-hand side, I just have this 3x plus 9. Okay, 3 times 2x is 6x. 2 times 1 is 2. 3 times 6 is 18. 2 times 1 is 2. And that still equals 3x plus 9. 2 goes into 18 9 times. 2 goes into 6x 3x times. It goes to 3x plus 9. Now I'm going to move the smaller variable. Uh-oh. I don't have a smaller variable. So if I subtract 3x from that side to bring it over here, I end up getting 9 equals 9. When this happens in math and you get <laughs> a number equals a number, that's technically a true statement, right? Does 9 equal 9? Yes, it's a true statement. When you get something like this, the solution can be anything. Therefore, there are infinitely many solutions. That is an actual answer in math. There could be infinitely many solutions. Therefore, there are infinitely Oops, I misspelled this right here. It's supposed to be an I. Oops. Of course it won't erase it. Come on. All right. I guess I just made a mistake and we're just going to write it again. I N F I N I-T-E-L-Y. Yes, I am looking at the book because I cannot spell that on my own. Don't judge me. The solution can be anything. Therefore, there are infinitely many solutions. So in, um, in college, when I would take notes and stuff, wow, it erased that, but it wouldn't erase this. Oh, now it's erasing it. Um, so in college, when I was writing notes, I, was trying, I would always try to keep up with the professor. And when the solution ended up being infinitely many solutions, I came up with a little uh, abbreviation for me. So you would write infinitely like this. And I would write it like this, infinitely many. So I never had to learn how to spell the word. <laughs> I know, shame, shame. But when, it, when the solution was infinitely many, I would make the infinite sign, put apostrophe L-Y, many. Do not do that in your English class because your English teacher will probably like, I'm recording, but there you go.